Hello glorious goblins, it is Drea. I realized it had been a while since I've made one of these so I wanted to do a start to finish video for you. So let's do it. So this one I'm working on a Buffy from the inspo deck. Drew adopted her and did the quote, which is great. I was thinking that Gabrielle from the Xena thing that I did um, for the Fight Like a Girl series looks um, pretty sassy and enough like Buffy that I can alter her and um, just kind of start from her uh, general vibe as um, the pick for Buffy. So I went into that piece and took out all my background stuff and I'm editing out Xena. Looking up some Buffy references. I have trouble with Buffy's outfit because making her recognizable can be kind of hard because she just wears normal clothes. But I figured this outfit would be pretty classic Buffy. So I'm changing uh, in the layers I had drawn before the colors of things just to give me a little head start. I know I obviously had to change that back arm. Uh, change her mouth. She has thinner lips. Looking up some hair references. Again, fan art of Buffy can be hard for me because her hair is pretty plain. <laughs> uh, but I want to make sure to at least get the part right. So working on the hair sculpting with my blur tool. Looks amazing. No notes. <laughs> it's done. <laughs> Giving her the jacket. Giving her some earring. So this is just me kind of sketching on top of my blur tool paint. And then once this part is all done and I've lined up everything the way I want it, then I will do the lines and colors. So this is just like the sketch. So I do blocks of color and then shape them out, kind of like sculpting it with the blur tool. Moving stuff around, making sure my silhouette's nice. Um, changing her head shape a little so she looks more like uh, Sarah Michelle Geller. doing the pants. I started with a skirt so I'm gonna have to change that up and I went back and forth a thousand times on should I have this knee up here? Should I have her like that or just standing? In the end I decided standing for her would be better. So I'm making her hips a little thinner again just making her look more like the character. Making the steak. I like to have them whiter at the at the top exaggerated is seems to be always better for the silhouette so I'm sketching in her jacket pieces now now I when I'm done with the whole thing I like to move it around stretch it out see if I can make it as dynamic as possible Going into my old folders here, because I, I have so many things I've already made. Taking this little hand to see if a hand on the hip might be good for her. In the end, I decided against it. It made her look a little too sexy. <laughs> We're going for badass here. So now I decided, okay, good to go. Time to do the lines. I always start with the middle of the face and work out from there. Eyes are always first for me. I color those in and make those part of the line layer so that when I color underneath it, I don't have to fight with the eyes. I can just color all the skin at once, makes it much easier. And I'm kind of changing shapes of things as I draw these lines a little bit. You can see me going in and blurring out the extra bits of color in the background as I go. And that's because I'm always checking the silhouette to make sure it's as dynamic as I can be. Right now I'm fighting because I'm so used to drawing curly hair. The hair took me an embarrassingly long time because I was like, no, it's straight, it's straight hair. Make it straight. Fussing over the hair for a million years because I feel like I made it too curly. <laughs> 
I can get on autopilot. It's very easy to do to get on autopilot. And when I'm on autopilot, I'm drawing curly hair. If you hear whining, that is my chupacabra. I have a plate of food on my desk, and she is wanting us to know that she's here to help with that plate of food. Now Drew is chasing her around the room. We're just very professional in this operation. Oh, you saw me at the Something is Wrong podcast? Is a very good podcast, you guys. It's on Spotify. Highly recommend. It's very addicting. So I always there Chupacabra. And there she goes. I always like to do the if I'm gonna color in black, I make it a separate line layer so I can make those lines gray and adjust them separately. Now the eternal struggle over how blonde are you? Are you very blonde? Are you honey blonde? Are you dark blonde? Are you favor blonde? Are you Marilyn blonde? There's so many blondes. I put the lip color in my line layer also so that when I color it, um, when I color the skin tone, I don't have to fight that either. There it is. Something was wrong. Everybody listen to it so we can talk about it. This one's a pretty fast color because really there's just a few colors. Hair, skin, black, red, wood. I add in the, um, I have a rule for myself that I can use two colors per layer. I really try not to break that rule because if I do, I'll be coloring forever. It's going to take way too long. So uh, when you see me going in with a second color, uh, that is why. There's just two colors for the hair, two colors for the skin. It makes it look kind of just real enough without making it look too painted because um, I can work in a lot of styles and that keeps me in line with this style. That's why black is so fast and easy to color. Kylo Ren takes like two seconds to color because there's no different shading. Okay, so now I've got her done. I did my little hair wispies. Now I'm working on the background. I like to get the background how I want it to be. I forgot that I'm signing her name right now. That's what I'm doing. I like to do the background before I do the lighting effects just to make sure it blends well. So I'm figuring out, hmm, which special effect? Raining blood, that's cool. Let's do that. More blood on the spike. It's not a vampire fan art without lots of blood. Okay, so now when I go in to do the lighting effects, I copy everything that I've colored and the lines into another folder on top of that. Merge all those layers together, I make it darker, turn the saturation up, and then, so what you're seeing me do now is deleting that top layer, so everything I did before shows through underneath. And that's the fastest way I found to do um, cool dramatic lighting really quickly and not lose the colors that I spent so long putting in the first place. Making her pants shiny. And then something I started doing recently in the end, now I've got these two different layers of color, is I'll go in and I'll color adjust everything to make it more dynamic um, color-wise. Oh, and there's the, the shiny at the end. I just um, put a gradient. Um, foreground to clear just to fade out in the background just to make her stand out a little more uh, so I did my I turned up the reds in the shadowy top layer and I turned up the yellows and the highlights of my bottom layer and that's how I did the extra lighting stuff um, let me know if you guys want some more nitty-gritty detail things like that I could do some more tutorial kind of stuff but um, so this is, I just thought I'd start with this one. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I will talk to you later.